In our next project, we're going to learn to use 3D in After Effects. So this is the practice project that we're going to be creating. And you can see that it has these layers that are laid out in 3D space. And they're kind of like a little pop-up book or a greeting card maybe you got when you were a kid where things are just flat pieces of paper that face towards the camera. And you can see that over here. You can see how these are just flat layers that are facing towards the camera. Notice we don't have a ground, we don't have anything on the sides, we don't have a sky. Now if you notice here, well yeah, there is a sky that's behind there. It's just pushed way back into the background. So we have three dimensions that we're working with, X, Y, and Z. Let me show you those. I'm just going to type P for position on our camera here. X is horizontal left and right. Y is vertical, up and down. And these you've been working with all semester long. What we're adding this time is the depth dimension, in and out, towards or away from the camera. Depth, that's Z. So X, Y, Z. And in After Effects, we refer to this as two and a half D actually, it's not real 3D, it's two and a half D. Adobe calls this postcards in space. You can see why. We just have these flat little postcards that are laid out in depth. Now, After Effects does have the capability of creating 3D extrusion. In other words, having layers that are more than just postcards. They actually have depth. They have extrusion. Okay, now this is something special that we're not going to get into this semester. We are going to just scratch the surface by working with postcards in space. And we can see here how this looks when we rotate a camera around three layers of our postcards. So your task is going to be to go out to VectEasy, just like you've done in other projects, and I want you to search for landscape and make sure to push the uh, little free button down here so that we get to see all of these free ones. And there's lots of them to choose from. What I want you to try to do is choose these kinds of things that have these flat layers that face towards the camera. What I want you to try to stay away from is this kind of thing that shows depth into the background. This one shows the ground. We don't want to see the ground and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Um, so you're going to try to avoid things like roads, this sort of a thing that shows the ground here. Instead, this is a better one because it's all flat layers. They are facing the camera, directly up and down facing the camera. This kind of thing with water, it's going to be more difficult on you. And we could do something like this, but it's uh, a bit tricky and you'll have to know specifically how to do it. Here's a good one. Uh, this one, maybe not so much because again, it's showing depth to the camera. And if you can imagine as we fly through this in Z space, it's going to give away the gag. The fact that these objects do not have extrusion. This kind of thing, no good. This one, I don't recommend it. So I want to show you why we want to avoid images with the ground in them. On the right, over here, we've got three birds, 
Uh, we've got a tile floor here. That's our ground layer and a little grass in the background and even further back we've got our clouds and sun and so forth. If you look on the left side you'll see how these are laid out in terms of depth. Our postcards in space. This is close to the camera. These birds are further away than the grass then the background. Let's say I want to move these birds in the background. This guy right here. Let me go ahead and twirl this up so you don't get confused by all this. Birds in the background. I'm going to type P for position. Now you'll see that I've got the depth position set to negative one right now. Let's just see what happens when we move this around. Negative numbers move towards the camera positive numbers move away from the camera. So I'm going to hold shift and just drag this depth dimension out towards the camera. Okay, now look what happens when I pass into the positive numbers. The legs of the bird have disappeared. That's because this is a flat layer. It's flat and facing towards the camera. It's pretending to be three dimensions. It's not. So let's again, let me go to negative one. Negative one, we see the legs. If we go to positive one, the legs disappear. Now it is possible to create a ground, it's absolutely possible to do this. I'm going to turn off our fake ground layer here and I'm going to put this tile layer here into three dimensions and we'll see, okay, well we have just a simple sort of a crosshatch pattern and I'm going to type R for rotation and P for position and I'm going to rotate the X dimension 90 degrees. Okay, negative 90, 90 doesn't matter. Okay, oh look, it completely disappears. This layer has no depth. When we turn it perfectly on its side, we can't see it anymore. So with our position, we're going to move this down in Y space and it'll start to appear for us. Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay, now we have a ground layer and we can find just the right spot to put that in to show the feet of the birds.